Go ahead. Hi, everybody. We are making brownies and Congo butters today. And I like these a lot because we almost always have those the ingredients for them somewhere in the house. Almost always. I wonder what that, that noise is. I don't know. Everyone mute, mute yourselves and then you won't have the feedback. Right. And so first thing I'm going to do is put, um, no, I've already, I've already got the butter melted, turned on the oven to 350, and I'm going to set up the pan. The best way to set up a pan for brownies, particularly goopy brownies like I like, is by using parchment paper. Um, I, I checked the corners, I drew lines, and you just cut out the corners like this. And when they're cooked, you just lift them out with the parchment paper, which is super easy. And they, they will probably fall apart if, if you didn't have this, or it would make a huge mess. You don't want to do that. So you cut out the corners. You roughly measure, cut out the corners, spray, like that, push it in, fold it down a little bit. And then spray again. Mm -hmm. This is the easiest way to deal with getting the brownies out of the pan. It's just easy. This is the, I already did one for the Congo bars. So we're going to make The brownies. So, um, I've got two thirds of a cup. Wait, wrong one. No, three quarters of a cup of butter that I melted. I have. I'm going to. I'm going to put in a half a cup of flour, into a sifter, and three quarters of a cup of cocoa powder. Now I use Dutch process because it's darker. And I always sift it because it always turns into these big lumps. And I just assume not have them. But three quarters of a cup. And then you sift it together. And throw in a little bit of salt. Half, half teaspoon of salt. Ta-da! The end. Okay. Then it is one and a quarter cups of granulated sugar. 
Now, if you want chewier brownies, you use part, um, part brown sugar. Not, you know, not a whole lot different, but one and a quarter cups. I put like half a cup of granulated sugar. I mean, uh, brown sugar in it. They, it somehow or another, it makes it chewier. And throw in the but melted butter. And this needs to be kind of really mixed up well. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything, but it, it helps to beat in a little bit of air into the sugar and butter together. I love it because you don't have to cream it together, you put like a cake or something. But it, maybe a minute of beating it up. If you want to, you can use a mixer. But it makes it, I don't know, it makes it more smooth somehow. Already you can see it's kind of lighter in color than it, when it first started, when I first started. And then eggs. These are eggs from my chickens. So one at a time, they should be room temperature. What if you forgot to take your eggs out and they're not room temperature? Yeah. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> no. Just make sure that this isn't real hot. You know, I'm sure it'll be fine. And you're just beating them in, like I said, one at a time. Until it's nice and smooth. Now, I didn't have any um, instant coffee powder. So I had leftover coffee from, from um, this morning. So I, it's about a tablespoon of coffee. And I'm going to put a tablespoon of vanilla into the coffee. It seems like a lot, but it's pretty nice. It, it's a good flavor. The coffee makes chocolate taste more chocolatey. So if you have if you have instant coffee powder, you can dissolve it in a little bit of water or just throw it in. If if they're big crystals, I'd I'd put it uh, I'd put a little water into them. But um, because I don't have it. And because the only time I would ever use instant coffee is in brownies, I don't think I'm going to buy it either. So that's what that looks like. And you can see it's nice and smooth, really well mixed, which means it's time for The only thing that is a problem with this is that it might end up all over your counter. But you can see it's lovely, goopy, and extremely chocolatey. 
Look at how wonderful that is. It's nice and smooth. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this. Because now I used, the last time I used, I cut up Trader Joe's plus I cut it and used that, a cup of it, a cup of chocolate pieces. But today, because I don't have six ounces in here, here's three quarters of a cup of chocolate chips, which go in, which make it incredible. <laughs> Do you ever use C's chocolate chips? Oh, yes. Don't you love them? You don't have to put the chocolate chips in. You really don't. Um, you could put walnuts. You could put chocolate chips and walnuts. You could do anything you want, but I particularly, you could do semi-sweet, you could do dark chocolate, you could do milk chocolate, whatever floats your boat. Now, I'm doing triple chocolate. Perfect. <laughs> so I've got dark milk and white. Perfect. Perfect. You could do white chocolate. Doesn't matter. And So Carrie, this is your dinner tonight. <laughs> Carrie? I haven't quite figured out what we're having for dinner. We might have chili dogs, because that's easy. <laughs> the other night you had a sheet pan dinner. We did, we did. I did um, uh, chicken and potatoes, broccoli, and mushrooms. It was fabulous. Fabulous, fabulous. Okay, so here you have And that's it. You're stuck with the dishes. That's that's all you've got. That's all she wrote and it, Okay, if you want them less chocolatey and more chewy, I would put a couple of the tablespoons more um, flour in them. I parcel out maybe a little bit of um, brown sugar. And instead of all butter, do a quarter cup, do, same amount, you know, three quarters of a cup, but only half a cup of, of butter and a quarter cup of, um, of vegetable oil. And you'll get a much chewier brownie. Now, what do the brownies look like? Well, I made them yesterday and it helps to cool them off. But this is, this is what they look like. Really densely dark chocolate with pieces, you know, not bad, not bad at all. Any questions about about this about brownies? No. Okay. All right, so I'm going to clear the decks a little bit and do wash my hands and do the Congo bars next. The story about Congo bars is 
that this was something that my mother always made. Um, didn't mom make that, Dana? And it was one of the first things that I ever made. And I know it was the first thing that Dina made in her whole life, you know, uh, by herself. It's so difficult, you know? I put, I melted the butter, but it's congealing a little bit. So I'm gonna put it into the microwave for about 10 seconds. Okay, so first I'm going to get the dry ingredients. You're going to know right away that it's a really different recipe because there's so much flour in it. You have two and a quarter cups. and a quarter cups of flour and baking powder, two teaspoons, two teaspoons. One, two, and Half a teaspoon of salt. And this just gets sifted. Probably you wouldn't have to sift it, but I always do. Kate, excuse me one second. Your recipe, I don't know if it matters, but your recipe says two and a half cups of flour. And oh. unless, I, unless I misunderstood. It does matter. It does matter. I was okay. looking. So yes. is it which is it two and a half or it's two and a half. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you for catching. Oh, no problem. I'm just reading along and I write notes and it's like I'll get there later and, and go, should I have changed it or not? Perfect. Thanks. Okay. So in a bowl that's big enough to hold it all. You're going to put, now it's time for, for one and a quarter. That's a quarter and what did I do with the cup measure? Okay, I've lost my mind. Two and a quarter. It's two and a quarter cups of, of firmly packed ground, of of firmly packed brown sugar. And of course, I have no idea. It's here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and firmly packed, you know, you know about brown sugar and being firmly packed. You push it down. If you were doing this by weight, it would be a one pound package of brown sugar. Then the butter. Butter is kind of warm, melted, but it looks, it's going to look very different from the brownie stuff. You want it all mixed and wet, sort of, I don't know, wet sand looks like. And then you add your eggs. Mm. 
one at a time because otherwise you're not going to be able to mix it very well. I cut this recipe in half yesterday because I only wanted a small tray and I just threw in two eggs instead of one and a half eggs and I added a couple of tablespoons more flour and it turned out to be mighty fine. So it doesn't matter. Ah, oh, Susan, you're here. Okay, that's one. Sorry I'm late, everybody. We talked about you. Behind Did you? My ears were burning. Yeah. Behind your back and everything. Well, that's okay. Why should today be any different than any other day? I was going to say, this has been going on my whole life. Why is it different today? There you go. There you go. So we're making yummy stuff. Right. As always. And here comes third egg. So there you have it. That's all your, oh, except you do need a couple tables, teaspoons of vanilla. Because everything's better with vanilla. I don't think the original recipe called for vanilla, but we always put it in vanilla. So, there you go. There's the wet. You put the dry in, like you always do. And stir it up. Again, it's the only danger here is if you get it on the counter mm -hmm. because it tends to flop out at the beginning. But you can see how easy this recipe is. It's like, wow. Which is why Dina was making it at the age of nine or eight. Okay, then it's all about what you add. A cup of chocolate chips. By the way, if you want more chocolate chips, knock yourself out. If you don't, if you don't like walnut pieces, don't put them in. If you wanna throw, oh, what else could I throw in here? Um, almonds, you could put almonds in. I'd put almond flavoring in it too. Um, you could put coconut, white, you know, whatever. But this is the, the way we made it at home. How about marijuana? Oh, well, why not? I've, I've got some of them. No. <laughs> then you'd end up with a super blondie. Yeah, there you go. And here is the pan that I prepared earlier. And you just get it in there. Now, all of the cooking times I've given you are all approximate. Mainly because if I like them goopy, you might not like them goopy. If you want them more cakey and cooked, you can do it. You just leave them in there a little longer. So, this is. Did you get my reference on how blondies came from Nancy Drew? 
Yes. Isn't I that did. interesting? That is so interesting. I never knew that. That's why we started making, I think mom started us, we started making blondies like way back when we were like eight, like Tina. Yep. The recipe that you gave me isn't that different from the one that I have here. Except it doesn't have chocolate chips. It doesn't have chocolate chips in it. And the blandy recipes that I looked at all seem to have, oh, um, white chocolate chips in them or something that keeps them blonde. Right. So whatever. I, but you're, you're Stuart's hero. Because I made blondies for him one time, and then I read him the reference from Nancy Drew, and he oh. said, but he said there's no chocolate chips in here. This was years ago. <laughs> I, said, I said, it's called a blondie. And, and he said, but it would be better with chocolate chips. So then I was telling him about your recipe, and he said, see, Kate knows how to make blondies. <laughs> okay, this is the edge. And it tastes much more like a chocolate chip cookie. Okay? I I cool it off, cut it up. But the interior, because I can do it the way I want it, the interior here is super goopy, right? Right? Um, Barry. Yes. Yeah. It's a goop a, weren't you here for these? No, but I'll have one now. Here. Okay. <laughs> oh, it was Diana who was who was I, 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 off last night, and she she was like, "Oh my God, it tastes like chocolate chip cookie dough, but it's cooked on the outside." So whatever you can have, you can cook them a little longer, and they'll be much more like chocolate chip cookies, or you can um, leave them goopy in the middle and have just the edges cooked. It's your choice. I love it because that's what you do. You just do it however you like doing it. And there you have it. They, um, that will be out in another 20 minutes or so. Uh, the, the, the brownies will be out, but the, and then I'll put the, um, the conga bars in, but little kids love these. I think big kids love these too. Yeah, yeah. So there you have it. I don't think anybody doesn't love them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, weird people who don't like chocolate. <laughs> I say. Or sugar. Or sugar. Or sugar. Or butter. We used to call them blonde bluebirds because we were a bluebird troop and we were very competitive with brownies. So for refreshments, we would have blonde bluebirds. <laughs> awesome. That's a great story. Yeah, what were the bluebirds? Campfire girls. Campfire girls. Campfire girls? Young, yeah. young campfire girls, just like brownies or young Girl Scouts. I was a bluebird. I knew I knew oh. brownies, but I, well, not that I was ever one. I went to school in Manhattan Beach, and I lived in El Segundo. There was no way I could be part of any troop anywhere. So. And our mother didn't drive. And our mother didn't drive. So. <laughs> I could I could never join those groups. It was sad, but I think I survived. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> anyway, so there you go. We there you have it. Um, and uh, next week, I'm thinking that I will make crack chicken. I made, yes. I made crack chicken for Tony for his birthday. And evidently, um, Marie Callender's had a crack chicken, but I didn't like it with 
chicken shreds in it. I like it with chicken pieces. So I'm going, it'll be chicken, mushroom, artichoke hearts, and cream. Ooh. Sounds yummy. What's not to like? And <laughs> ah, yum. Um, I made it with, uh, I made it so that half of it could be um, vegetarian. I made the sauce, did the chicken separate, then poured some of the sauce over the chicken, baked it, and, um, and all of the vegetarians who were here, all two of them, um, it was Mary Ann and Justin, had had it had the artichoke mushroom cream sauce with spinach in it over the top of rice and it turned out pretty fine so i'll do that next week if you but where does the name come from um, i think it's a marie calendar's recipe or at least the idea of it is it was an artichoke mushroom chicken Thing, and people called it cracked chicken. Huh. So well, we don't know why. Well, hello. You, you start eating it and it's like crack. Oh, I see. You just. As, a, as opposed to mellow Alice B. Toklas brownies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never, in these brownies, I've never done the Alice B. Toklas thing. But I think I maybe I sh oh I should to give to a friend, uh, and he said never do that again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know which friend, right, Carrie? I do, and I quite enjoyed those brownies <laughs> because you gave some to me too. <laughs> stuff in her backyard and she gave me a whole jar full of it and I'm just a huge jar <laughs> you know one time Stuart was appalled that I never saved any but I had an old old house and I, most of the houses on the west side have all kinds of pot growing in it because yeah. it's a weed. Right. And, and it chokes out everything you have. Right. And it grows like you don't even have to water it. The damn stuff just like, is that, I used to have to pull it out, you know, and fill an entire green thing every, <laughs> every week just to get it out of there because otherwise it would run right into the garden or go up the quince trees. And choke those. I mean, stuff is ah. bad news. Oh, oh, the, the trash I, man must have loved you. <laughs> I, you know, as far as I was concerned, it was a really bad weed. <laughs> when I visited my grandfather when I was a really little girl. I was like 14. I knew nothing. And um, the outhouse, there was an outhouse in the backyard. And the outhouse was completely surrounded by hemp ah. that my grandfather had started growing during World War II oh. to make rope. Ah. Mm -hmm. But you could get you could get kind of loopy <laughs> walking through that hemp. <laughs> and he would pull it out and burn it. You know, <laughs> everybody felt good. Did he ever make a rope out of it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. He sold okay. it. he sold it during World War Two. Oh wow! Uh, because they didn't have the the hemp was from um, Southeast Asia, right? Right. And they couldn't get any hemp, and they were they were actually paid to grow hemp. Oh, okay. Yeah, which is bizarre, but 
Yeah. Which is why we had such happy sailors. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, there you go. You have it. And um, uh, thank you for coming this week. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. I hope you enjoy the brownies and the Congo bars. And I know Dan and Nadine will love them because <laughs> he's going to get the Congo bars and brownies from my house. And, oh, and Mariana is here. Yay. Ah, Yay. Mariana. I get to eat all the food. <laughs> so I will see you next week. Next week.